morning it's friday and uh for those of you who do breath work with joe at the breathery um, you'll understand why friday seems like the right day to do this and i've just been listening to the playback not all of it i'm gonna i'm gonna show you about the tools and materials and then i'm going to listen to the playback later just the soundtrack with my headphones on and um, my salt sausage and see what happens to me and then I will show what marks I make after that. The marks that I'm going to show you first are about understanding the tools and materials. They're not necessarily expressive that's not the focus of this session. The focus of this session is what tools are useful for expressive mark making and how to use them and how to get to know how they work before you do your breathwork session so that um, it's a very easy continuation from doing the breathwork or whatever else it is you're doing into your integrative drawing or your expressive mark making so first things first you need a surface if i wanted to i could uh, make marks all over the white wood chip um i don't think my landlord would be impressed with that um so uh that would be a really nice big area to make marks on what I do use are two different things usually. This packing paper that comes with your delivery. So I always save it and it's great because it's really big and it doesn't cost you anything. And it's actually a really nice texture for drawing on, for making marks, especially if you're using charcoal or chalk pastels so that's that one and i'm going to show you some some of those marks in a minute uh, but i do recommend if you are somebody who you who thinks they're going to want to use paint or ink at any time and you're more a pencil person i really recommend getting an a3 at least an a3 sketchbook um, if you can afford it get a good quality one if you can't it doesn't matter anything that's available to you will work but i like to use a sketchbook because then all my drawings are in one place and I can refer back to them. I can use it as a visual journal. I keep, I write the dates, the days, what's going on. I write reflections in there and it's a lot easier to keep it all together. You can do that drawing on paper and I'll talk about that in the future as well. Um, but uh, for these kinds of sketchbooks, I recommend at least uh, 180 GSM if you want to be able to use a wet media. Uh, so the higher the number of the GSM, the more um, it's going to be able to cope with water, ink, paint, and the more expensive it is, the better quality of outcomes you're going to get if you're interested in exploring what the outcomes are if it's purely an exercise of making marks then i would probably go for a cheaper one um, i can put some recommendations in the description so I'm actually going to start with pencils. Now, lots of people think, oh, uh, I'm going to buy myself one of these lovely boxes of um, sketching pens or drawing pens or whatever, and then they find that they only really use one of them. Um, I, this 
isn't mine. I kind of stole this from my mum. Sorry, mum, but you you didn't even know when they you couldn't actually get to them. Um, so I don't think you've missed them because you haven't mentioned where where's my box of Derwent graphic pencils. Graphic pencils, you know, I'd be going for sketching pencils really, but it's just a name because these are actually really good for mark making. So um, in my set, the ones that are most worn down are the ones up this end, the high numbers, the softer ones, because you can get a much better variety of mark out of these. These ones down here are really hard and these are very good for very, very light, very precise marks, which doesn't seem to fit very well with um, work that's about fluidity and um, automatic drawing and freedom of expression. So uh, we are looking down this end. So you don't, if you're gonna buy, you don't need to buy all these numbers. I would get something like a 2B, uh, 2468 something like that and I'll show you why in a sec um, now this this is just one type of pencil the other things that are really good if you're looking at buying are these graphite sticks so what's inside these what we call lead pencils or what we called in the 70s lead pencils isn't lead thank goodness they'd be poisonous it's graphite it's compressed graphite and I'll show you this in a minute as well you can actually scrape it with a pen and use it in another way uh, don't scrape it with a pen that's uh, not going to do anything a knife um, and you can also buy graphite powder so that's one type of pencils let's have a look at these and see what happens um, and I'm also going to show you the pencils that are really not a good idea to use it's all this kind of thing cheap things with a rubber on the end. I don't know where these came from, uh, but I would definitely not be buying those. Um, I, well, the thing is like with these, you don't know what softness of graphite's in there when you buy it. I think these are two Bs. I actually really like these for writing with uh, because I want to rub out mistakes. I never, would use these for drawing and I would never erase anything in a drawing. Um, a definitely not in an expressive drawing. So I uh, don't even think about getting an eraser. Um, yeah, that's another one. So anything that doesn't give you any indication of Legoland Windsor Resort, I've never been there. I don't know how I got this. I can't imagine anything worse, to be honest. Best Western Hotel, yeah. Okay, so all of those kinds of things, you don't know what they are, don't buy them. If you pick them up as you go along, that's fine. Um, and ex explore and see what marks you can get out of them. And um, these kind of things are really no good for this kind of drawing, but they're really good for other kinds of drawing. So there you go. Um, So I'm going to get started. I always think it's really nice with a box of new anything to go through and try each one out. Um, but in this case, we're not going to do that. So I'm going to start with the softest one, which is the 9B. And I'm going to make a series of purposeful marks. This is not expressive mark making, this is understanding the tool. So I'm first going to start by making the very lightest marks that I can possibly make. So just have a go 
of making the very, very lightest you can make and thinnest and then the very, very heaviest and thickest. And you'll be able to do that by turning the pencil on its side. Um, and of course, the, the sharper it is, the thinner the line you'll be able to make. And the blunter it is, the wider it'll get. So I would go through all of my pencils doing this and I'd try some really, really light lines. I bet I can get it even lighter than that, actually. Let's have a look. Okay, and I'd always label it as well, so we know where we are. So that's 9B, and I'd go through all the pencils doing this. Now, um, some people, you know, if they want to be more organised with it, they might do them one line, use a ruler, and go all the way across the page, going from really, really light to really, really dark. Other people might want to do them in a little area. Just... It doesn't matter. The point is that you're understanding how this tool works. And then, of course, after you've done your 9B, you move on to your 8B and your 7B and your 6B or whatever you've got. You know, even if all you've got is one pencil, you'll be amazed at how many kinds of marks you can get out of that pencil. So the most common pencil that people have lying around is a 2B, um, which is okay for getting started with. They're not brilliant for having a nice wide range of tone, but um, I'll just show you here that you can get quite a lot of different tone out of it. Um, apologies if this isn't uh, the best visuals ever. Again, I'm kind of going with the flow without thinking about it too much and getting stressed out about it. So this is 2B now. And you'll notice that you need to apply a lot more pressure to get the same kind of marks out of it. So I should be able to get much, much lighter marks. Yes, they're very, very, very fine and very light. I'm going to start applying a little more pressure. Okay, that's as dark as it's ever going to get. So if you were trying to do a drawing that had a really wide range of tone in it, I don't recommend this. Well, actually, I recommend against it because you'll never get a black. It doesn't matter how hard you try, it won't happen. Okay, so the other thing to do next after you've gone all of, through all of your pencils um, I'm going to get a mid-range one, I'll get a 5B because that's one here that doesn't require sharpening. Uh, it's got a, quite a nice round end on it. I'm going to talk about sharpening pencils as well because the way these have been sharpened is pretty awful and with a horrible sharpener which basically ruins your pencils. Um, but that will come later. So I'm going to use my other hand actually. So let's have a look. Oh, that's not ideal for you. Well, I'm going to draw it going up the other way, which is quite funny. So notice I'm holding it uh, quite down, close down here. And uh, the closer I hold it to the tip, the graphite end, uh, the more control I've got over it. This is a hand that I don't use usually for writing and drawing, but I do use it for expressive mark making. There's a very good reason for that. And that is that I've let control of, uh, uh, sorry, I've, um, I'm, oh, I can't think of the word. Uh, you choose whatever the word was about 
not being concerned about control. Um, so they're very, very light and they're rather nice actually. Bit kind of seaweedy. Actually, they're a bit like jellyfish legs. So you can experiment with long and short, with close together and far apart, with one hand and the other hand. Well, that's actually a really good way to do jellyfish legs. And then the other thing is to hold it near the top. So you've actually got very little control. Let me move this back and see if I can demonstrate that. I'll do it first with the hand I usually use. Uh, bear in mind, I've been doing this for a long time, so I'm pretty good at doing straight lines and parallel lines. This actually probably takes quite a lot of practice, which is fine because then yours will be all lovely and wobbly and free flowing. So that's uh, holding it right at the top with the hand I usually use. And now I'm gonna do the same with my other hand. Oh, and when I apply more pressure with the pencil held like this, I'm making unexpected marks, which I rather like. It's, my shoulder's not loving it though, so I'm going to stop that. Um, my preference is for using the softest pencil available to me. So even looking at these marks now, my preference is for these. So I've got a really um, blunt 8B here. I'm going to see what happens if I use this in a very loose kind of way. Ooh. Quite nice. Okay, I better stop. I could uh, spend the rest of the day doing that. Um, I do tend to get a bit obsessed when I find a line that I like. So let's have a look with the thick graphite stick now the only thing about these is you've got to be careful not to drop them on a hard store because store no floor because they're only protected by a piece of paper which if they do snap in half they're you know then you have actually got one to use in each hand which is the other thing i was going to mention so let's have a look at what kind of marks we can get out of this compared to what we've done already I'm using it on its side. So, oh, that's nice. And then what happens if I press down really hard and then ease off? Oh, that's lovely. And then let me see if I can do that going back the other way. Yes, and then um, move my fingers right up to the top of it and then put more pressure on and let it go where it wants to and, and now roll it oh now I've gone too far roll it oh, you can also flick a pencil well these marks are starting to get really very lovely I do, I do actually get a lot of pleasure out of this kind of thing, but this is really, it's going to a whole new level. And I'm really looking forward to listening to the um, Soma Psychedelic track later and then really going wild with this. Um, another one that could be of interest uh, for people who don't want to get really messy 
our charcoal pencils. These come in different hardnesses or softnesses. Um, what have we got here? 2B, 4B, 6B. Um, okay, I better sharpen those and come back to you because um, I'm going to struggle to get any marks out. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's very interesting. It's quite effortful though. You can get some nice black marks with these and then you don't end up getting it all over your fingers. But it... Okay, right, I'm going to pause and sharpen. Okay, well, my wrists and fingers are not happy about sharpening pencils with a knife, so uh, I've only managed to do this, but actually it's fine for what I need uh, because... It's got some really interesting edges on it. And I'm kind of turning as I'm drawing and getting some beautiful marks. So notice how I'm holding the pencil. Okay, if, you, if you're going to hold the pencil like this, you're not going to get interesting marks. Uh, but if you were a bit more free with it, and try with weight variations, try spinning the pencil. Um, and of course, you can drag a pencil or you can push a pencil. And they're very different things as well. Uh, you can also go sideways and kind of you can do a slide along on its side as well. That's quite satisfying. Um, I'm going to give a link to how to sharpen pencils and I'm gonna to have to get Simon to do mine. Uh, here's one he did earlier for me. <laughs> oh, where is it? There, um, that, oh, what am I doing? Um, so this is a little bit over the top because we needed to poke it in something really small, but that's kind of a less exaggerated version of this is what you want because you'll have a nice long tip that you can do lots of nice sideways marks with. This is only a 2B, so that's very unsatisfactory. Uh, but I think you can start to see how wide these could go when it's properly sharpened. And um, the other thing that you can do is you can use sandpaper to get them really sharp. Or a sand block. Or if you wanted them to be really smooth. So there's a lot of exploring to be done there. And I've actually pushed it too hard and snapped the lead off. That's okay, because that could be quite interesting as well, couldn't it? Not when my paper's on an angle though. Okay, if it was flat, I'd just use my finger and push it around the paper, but you can have a go at that. Um, so that's pencils done. Have a go um, and I haven't written all the notes here, but I can recognise that that looks like a 6B. Uh, that's a 2B. I know that these are charcoal pencils, but it, um, for your reference, if you're new to this, it's uh, a better idea to probably do it as you go along like I did. Right, on to charcoal and chalk pastels. So here I have some willow charcoal, um, thick sticks. You can also get boxes that have got a variety and that's probably the best idea. Um, so, I've got a little selection here. So that's what, uh, 
oh sorry that's what a whole stick would look like um it's, it's almost as big as my hand um and that's great because you can snap them in half and draw with two at the same time and then you can get quite little thin ones as well and then you can also get charcoal that's much thicker than that so i do recommend getting a variety box um charcoal is really brilliant because you can see where i've worn this one down um it's got some flat edges on it so let's have a look and see what i can do with this That's cool. So by using it on its side, I can go from really thin to thick and then thin again. Right, so I'm gonna move on to the other paper now just because uh, I've run out of space in this book. And I can't remember what I was going to say. No, gone. Uh, there's no reason why you can't do it in a book like this. It's absolutely fine. Um, but I am just showing you how to do it. So I don't want to use up all my paper in my expensive sketchbook. So I'm moving on to this. Okay. Right, tilt you back a little bit. That's it. Right. So just get your charcoal and it's all about variety. So, okay, right. I'll start for the sake of this exercise with one whole new piece. And the very first thing I'm gonna do, snap it in half and I'm gonna draw with two at the same time rolling, pulling, my paper's moving everywhere, that's fine. You know, if I was trying to do something uh, very specific, I would have my paper stuck down, but I'm exploring. So the paper moving as I'm drawing was actually very interesting. So play around with that. What's it like if the paper stays where you want it to be? What's it like if it's um, flat on the table, what's it like if it's up against the wall, what's it like if it's at an angle. Okay, that was quite a fun start. That's also not helping my shoulder much. Now I'm going to use the side of the charcoal to make more broader strokes. And these are really nice if you're feeling like you want to swoosh it about. Oh, a little bit of a whistle off that one. And then You might want some quite deliberate marks. That's a real contrast. So, and then you might want some really tiny, oh, that's not very tiny, is it? Uh, that's a bit tinier. Whatever it is you need to do, you can pretty much, oh, that was really, that was small. So, Again, you get a different mark pulling and pushing. So there's lots there. I mean, just look at that variety of marks for a start. And if you're inclined to get yourself pastels, or if you've got pastels, um, These are different again because you've got 
it's a very well defined edge and the uh, these are made of chalk um, so they're going to be slightly different to charcoal so you get a different kind of quality of black with these it's sort of blacker blacker than charcoal not sure if you can see in this. Oh, that's fine. That's fine because I can get different kinds of marks off the end of that now. So you see what you prefer. I mean, to be honest, I. It depends what kind of mood I'm in, but today I'm feeling like uh, I'm really loving the chalk pastels. Oh. I'm just sticking to monochromatic, but I've just kind of had a feeling like I want to use some white on here just to show you how just with black and white you can get so many different marks and that's why it's nice to use this buff coloured paper across here a bit um, the whites show up really well on this kind of paper. And again, I'm holding it in different ways. So uh, I tend to hold it quite loosely and near the top and just kind of let it do its thing. Uh, but I might also paper you've got the bigger areas or uh oh they're kind of like cuts you can also do like fast flicks if that's what you're feeling but notice uh the chalk is falling off quite a lot with this so that's enough i think that you can see between um the graphite uh, the charcoal and the chalk pastels that there is enormous variety of mark making to be had just try it out and a tip couple of tips whenever I'm using this kind of stuff uh, I give that a good shake off out of the window and blow it uh, and then give it a good spray with some kind of ultra strong hold non aerosol hairspray for fixing I don't, don't go in for the aerosols, but these pump action ones are good. That's quite a small one. I don't, mm, probably better to get a giant bulk one. That'll be cheaper. Um, and then the other thing that I do in my sketchbook is, again, I would fix whatever I've done in here, even the graphite. If I've used soft graphite, I want to fix that with the hairspray. And if I've used I don't know, 
dry. If I've used charcoal or oil pastels, once that's dry, I would place another piece of this. Wrapping paper between that and the next page to stop it smudging. Or butcher paper, you know, that really thin stuff you used to get meat wrapped up in about a million years ago. Um, or, you know, that really old stuff I used to put fish and chips in. It's called, well, it's newsprint, isn't it? It's newsprint without the print, strangely enough. Printless newsprint. Um, so that's it from me. Where am I? Uh, any questions, put them in the comments and I'll do my best to uh, get to those and answer them. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, I will be doing another one before um, breathwork, live breathwork mark making. Um, because there's like a million things we can use. But have a go with these, see how you get on. And so I'll see you in the uh, space of breathing, whenever that is. And uh, if you're not doing breath work and you're wondering what on earth I'm going on about, have a look at uh, Joe Crookshank's The Breathery. Or just look up The Breathery on Instagram or something. Okay, I'm really tired. Uh, I've had about two hours sleep again. Uh, it's time for me to go and have a coffee. Bye for now, everyone.